Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the EcoFlow River Pro portable power station. We'll start with an overview of its features, we'll do some capacity and load testing, and then hopefully take a look at what's inside. Now the manufacturers seem particularly interested in having me review this unit. My first impressions of this are pretty good. It's a nice solid package. It doesn't feel cheapish or anything like that. This device has a 720 watt lithium ion battery built with standard 18650 cells and a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter that can surge up to 1200 watts. And taking a look at the front here, we have a small LED light. We have four USB ports. The first is a USB-C rated for 100 watts and the middle two are rated for 12 watts. And the blue port on the right is a USB quick charge rated for 28 watts. We have the on off switch for the display and we have a 12 volt accessory port. It's the standard cigarette lighter port you'd see on an automobile. And then we have a few DC output jacks as well and an on off switch for those. Taking a look at the right hand side here, we have a small airflow grate with a fan. We have three AC output receptacles and an on off switch for the AC or inverter. And then down the bottom left here, we have an expansion power port. So they actually sell an external battery you can plug in with this to add an additional 720 watt hours of storage, bringing the total to 1440 watt hours. And taking a closer look at that, there are two banana pins on the top and bottom, and several pins in the center which I assume are BMS or communications pins. Taking a look at the left hand side of the device, we have a larger airflow grate on the bottom, and this lid here flips up. We have our AC input, we have a 10 amp overload protection circuit breaker, we have an XT60 plug for your solar PV input, and we have this small black screw here for grounding if you wish to ground or earth your device. One thing that really stands out to me in this device is its super fast recharge time. You can recharge this from 0 to 80% in just one hour. If you remember several months ago we had reviewed a Jackery and the Jackery had a recharge time of 5 to 6 hours. So if this fast charge works as designed that will be a big win in my opinion. Additionally this device can be used as a UPS or uninterrupted power supply so we'll be testing that capability as well. Alright so there are a couple cables that come with this device. First we have the accessory port charger for the car, so it's got an XT60 on one end and then the standard uh, cigarette plug or whatever you want to call it on the other end. We've got a DC power cable for the front, so you would plug this into these two ports here and then you can plug this into any 12 volt standard braille connector device. We have a standard AC power cord and it's pretty cool that they provide this particular cable. This is for the PV input, so we have the XT60 on one end and then we have standard MC4s on the other end. I like that they provide this because some of the other devices I have seen, uh, such as the Jackery, used a proprietary connector, so if you want to connect your own panel, you would have to do that yourself. So this arrived at 22% state of charge. They never full charge these things due to shipping regulations. Alright, and it immediately turned on and started charging here. Wow, so it's charging almost 400 watts already. It's still climbing. 600 watts. All right, it looks like it settled around 600 watts there, which is interesting because that is also the output of the inverter. And uh, it's estimating one hour from 23% to 100% state of charge. All right, so we just reached 100% state of charge here. Uh, so for measuring the capacity, I'm going to use this kilowatt meter. And what this does is you plug your loads in the front and then you plug this into the outlet and it just measures the amount of power that's flowing through it. So I'll disconnect the AC input going to turn on the inverter AC output, plug in my meter here, and for my load I'm just using several incandescent light bulbs. And I wanted to add too that the measurement from the kilowatt meter of 178 watts is very consistent with the front of the device showing 175 watts. So that tells me that this is calibrated pretty well. So I charge this power station back up, we're at 98% currently. And the first thing I want to try is this heat gun. It's rated for 750 or 1500 watts depending on whether you use low or high mode. Now if I go and turn the heat gun to high, you can see it's still powering it just fine and it still says 600 watts. So how is it that this power station is powering this heat gun rated for 1500 watts and this is only showing 600 watts? So this power station has a feature called EcoFlow X Boost. And the manual and the online documentation say that allows it to run devices between 600 watts and 1800 watts. They recommend you stay within 600 to 1200 though. But of course I'm wondering, how does this work? How can this power a 1200 watt device if it's only a 600 watt inverter? 
So I thought, okay, maybe that value takes into account the surge rating, and they're saying it can surge for a few seconds and it's 1200 watts. What they're doing is dropping the voltage on the AC output. So now instead of seeing 120 volts, you're only seeing 90 volts or 70 volts. And what that's doing is allowing your device to continue to work, but it's consuming less power. It's only consuming 600 watts, even though it's rated for 1500 watts. Now that works perfectly fine on resistive loads like this heat gun. Uh, like if you're going to use a toaster or even a coffee pot would probably work. But, you know, I'm not really sure I like that feature too much because if you're powering something that's sensitive to voltage like that, like a, like a computer or a laptop or TV, things like that, you know, some of those have a wider range of input voltages, but going down to 70 volts and 75 volts, but that's okay because this device actually comes with an app you can use, the EcoFlow app. And I don't know if you can see this, one of the options in the app, there's a variety of settings you can do with it. Like I can push the button here and turn the light on and off. One of the settings you have here is you can disable the X boost. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So now when I turn this heat gun on, no, oh, I guess I gotta turn the AC output on. All right. So now when I turn this on low, you can see it jumps up to 830 watts and now it says overload because I've disabled the X boost functionality. So once it's overloaded to reset, you just have to turn the inverter off and then turn it back on. So if I try it on high now, you can see it went up to 1500 watts on the display and then it shut down to overload. So from this test, we've concluded that this power station can power this heat gun, but at a reduced capacity. So it's not giving you the full heat output. It's giving you some heat output because remember, this is a resistive load. So a resistive load can work at higher and lower voltages. So I've turned the X boost back on and I wanna show you exactly how this is working here. So if you look at the display here, we see 119.8 volts AC. So if I turn the heat gun on low, you can see it's dropped the output voltage to 102 volts, which is causing it to supply only 592 watts. So now if I switch the heat gun to high, you can see the output voltage has dropped to 75.6 volts, which is still allowing the heat gun to run, but only at 600 watts. So the next thing I want to test is the UPS or the uninterruptible power supply functionality of this device. So I'll plug the AC back in. You can see it begins charging, which is fine. I'm going to turn the heat gun on low and you can see we're putting out 600 watts and we're pulling in 900 watts. So the assumption there is that 300 watts is going to the battery. So now I'm going to unplug the AC input. And you hear it made a little bit of noise. The input dropped to zero and the output is at 600. Now I can return the AC input. And the load continues to function while we begin charging and putting out 600 watts again. So one thing to note about the UPS functionality is that they consider it an entry level UPS. And that's because the transfer time is 30 milliseconds between when the AC goes out and when the inverter takes over powering the load. And that 30 millisecond delay could cause sensitive electronics to turn off, such as if you're powering a computer workstation, a server, things like that. However, the UPS functionality does work and is a very cool feature of this portable power station. All right, so one of my favorite tests to do with these devices is to see how good the surge capability is. And to do that, I usually use this air conditioner. Now this is a particularly good air conditioner for testing these because it's only rated for 445 watts while it's running. So what I wanna know is if this has the surge capacity required to start the compressor of this air conditioner. Now I do have the X boost turned off because I don't want to starve the compressor of voltage. So we got it plugged in, AC output is on. Oops, and no, it didn't do it. All right, so let's try that once more. The overload's reset. AC output is on. Turn this on. Oh, it started at that time. That made a rather funny sounding noise, but it actually started it. So we're pulling 325 watts over here. And we have this on low fan. So I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that. It failed the first time. It started the second time, but it didn't sound very good, but uh, all right, so now what I want to do is test the charging functionality from a solar panel. This is a Renogy 100 watt solar panel and it's a nice bright sunny day, so we should see some good results here. All right, so I've got the MC4 connectors from the solar panel with the adapter that came with the charger. So on the other end is your XT60. 
and we'll plug that right into the charge port. All right, it's a little difficult to see this out here in the bright sun, but we are charging at 82 watts from that one panel. That's a pretty good result. And remember, you can connect multiple panels if you'd like. It's just very important that you do not connect them in series. Any panels you connect have to be connected in parallel. And I'm pretty certain you can only use 12 volt panels. I'll have to double check that when I go back in the house. All right, guys, now I did want to do a teardown as part of this video, but I'm already at 11 minutes, and I think I want to save that for a separate video. That way it's not being rushed, and I can make sure to include as many details as possible. That being said, I really do like this portable power station. I don't really have any major complaints about it. I think the X-Boost function is a little bit weird. I do see where it could be useful, especially if you're only using it with resistive appliances, such as incandescent light bulbs, uh, toasters, coffee makers, things like that, but... I really wish they would have included a slightly larger inverter. Our capacity test came in at 560 watt hours pulled from the AC receptacle out of a 720 watt hour battery, which comes out to a 78% of its rate of capacity. Now keep in mind that a large portion of that 22% that's missing is likely inverting efficiencies, converting from DC up until AC. Uh, so if I had to make an estimate, I'd say it's probably 80 to 85% efficient. Now, of course, if you were using the DC output, such as the regulated, uh, Accessory port or these two DC jacks, you would see significantly greater capacity. However, you would still see some efficiency losses because this is a regulated output and you are going through a buck converter. That being said, some of the things that were kind of eh about it, I really love this display. It looks wonderful indoors, but it's difficult to see outside. And I suppose that's a problem with pretty much any of these types of displays, LCDs in the sun. So that's not really a fault of the device. The only other thing is this door is a little bit difficult to open. You don't have much room to stick your finger in there, so I'm kind of just leaving it loose like that. So yeah, I was very impressed by this device. I will leave a link in the description where you can find more information or purchase one if you're interested. They are currently $5.99 on Amazon with a $30 coupon at the time of this video. If you want to see a teardown of this and see what's inside, please let me know. Hit that like button before you go, and thank you very much for watching.